From the EPAWA headquarters in South Allentown, Pennsylvania, it's time for Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The following segment is a weekly video blog, and the opinions of the forecaster do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the staff of Eastern PA Weather Authority LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martris with Weather Weeklies. And good Sunday morning to you, a December 6th edition of Weather Weeklies, and i got a lot of information I have to dump on you in this one because uh, there's, I understand it's uh, December 6th, we haven't seen any snow in our coverage area yet, and uh, for some reason, I don't know what it is, whether we're spoiled for past years, whether uh, you know we, we, lo- we read our winter outlook expecting something different uh, than, than what we're getting, and we had a very snowy outlook. Uh, l- listen, I'm just I'm just like the uh, when I, when I was back back in school, uh, high school, college, the teacher gave us a, or a professor or what what have you would give us something to read, and you have so many different classes and so many different things going on. I was that guy going for the Cliff Notes version, looking for a quick answer to whatever book report I had to do or whatever whatever uh, report we had to do for the teacher. Uh, I understand people don't read and and, uh, they don't like to read a lot of the technical stuff. Some don't understand it. I try to break that down for you in the Weather Weekly's video here and show you what's going on. Uh, But I don't expect you to retain every piece of information. If you did retain the information from our our winter outlook, you would have seen that our December outlook, although calling for near to slightly above normal temperatures, uh, excuse me, near to slightly above normal snowfall does not mean we're getting a lot of snow starting off the, the year. And uh, we knew it was going to start off slow for this winter, and uh, it would be a backloaded winter with the second half much stormier than the first half with much, with those uh, snow chances. So that's just the preface, preface of this entire Weather Weekly's video. I'm going to get into the long-range forecast table first, as I always do here. This was just updated on Friday. Uh, of course, above average temperatures this weekend into the early part of the week. And then we're going to go back to near average for a couple days with a storm lurking off the coast. I do think that stays off the coast now. We did mention that uh, if it does shift west, it could be a rain event for the region. The only area you'd have to worry about having, getting even clipped by that would be uh, you know, the Delaware beaches, uh, southern New Jersey beach areas. But I think that we're still trending in that direction of away from uh, a storm threat altogether. So, But even so, that's going to help bring in some colder air uh, for a couple days, but not cold by uh, this year, this time of year standard. So we're calling this near average. Then we head back above average for a couple days, the 11th through the 13th, and then I think we go into uh, a different change in the pattern here a little bit. Not an abrupt change. This is not going to be overwhelming cold. This is not going to be something that sticks around for a very long time. So we have the tw- the 14th to the 20th temperature here listed at slightly below average. Okay, we do maintain. 14th to the 20th is a below, slightly below average temperature time frame, and uh, we'll back that up here in the video here and show you why. I know different pieces of model guidance. Some people like to follow the uh, European model. Some like the uh, GFS. Some like the Canadian. We look for the one that makes the most sense. And right now, the GFS we think is the, the making the most sense, uh, with a little uh, pretty close back up to the with the Canadian. I think the European model is still a little bit lost, and this this happens a lot of times when you go through any kind of transition or pattern change. You will have a, a situation where uh, the models are not catching up on on things uh, too quickly. So. Uh, it takes some time. It takes some time to adjust to a different pattern change. I think that's what's going on right now, especially with the European model. And uh, here, after, we still have December as a whole slightly above average. I think people are losing sight of this here. They're saying, wow, it's so warm. And what's going on? It's December 6th, people. December 6th. We have this entire month as a whole slightly above average. Not sure what we were expecting here. I'll go into our analogs here in a minute. Uh, the December... Snowfall near to slightly above average is what we have for the entire month. Still holding on to that because of the second half we think is going to be a little bit more uh, favorable, but that doesn't mean we're going to turn on the switch for snow. We'll get into that too. And then January we have temperatures below average with near normal snowfall. Let's get into December here and January. We'll show you our, our, our closest analog. This is December 1957. These are anomalies, okay, compared to what is considered normal for the month of December. This was a very snowy year. 5758 was a very snowy year. Okay, we showed the uh, month of December here starting off warm, and this did not disappoint. Look at these temperatures here. This is our coverage area right here. This is all plus on this scale about plus three, plus three Fahrenheit above normal for the entire month. So that month, despite having snow at different parts of the month, timed right with the cold, 
because you do have cold shots that are, that are going to happen in the second half. We're not getting in the first half. I get that. Second half, we think we will have shots of cold air, and with time, if it is timed with the precipitation, will lead to a couple wintry events. That happened in 1957 as well. The entire month as a whole averaged 3 degrees Fahrenheit above normal. But look what happened in January. January, all this warmth is centered all up here. It is now pushed back here as the ridge shifts in Canada. Okay, and then we get into near to slightly below normal temperatures here in January in fifty in uh, January nineteen fifty eight. So this is our top analog. Still no reason to abandon it. Okay, this is what happened in nineteen fifty seven. So I'm not understanding why we're expecting this big snow. Uh, maybe we're spoiled from last year's. I understand we had said snow in in uh, in November. We had snow in October a couple years ago. This is not the norm. Okay, this is what the norm is. This is for those asking. Uh, we have a lot of questions about the normal snowfall for December by location. Not a lot of snow here. This is these are not impressive totals. These are, this is not. Uh, oh wow, we get a big blizzard here. This is not. This is these are actually pretty low numbers. Uh, Scranton seven inches, Allentown five, Harrisburg five, Philadelphia three point four. Not sure what we were expecting here, guys. Uh, th with these you know astronomical numbers we have near to slightly above normal snowfall this is all you need a little high point here in sussex new jersey but they're always colder probably one of the coldest areas of our region with the higher elevations up there okay but everywhere else two three three five five seven there this isn't a lot of snow so i'm not we're not expecting a ton of snow this month okay and obviously not in the first half we're, we're leaning toward the second half and seeing some changes that we'll go over now that will lead to a stormier second second half of the month here, but also a colder one. Now, it's not going to be uh, – we, we, we've outlined here in this table here. Go back to the table here a second. Uh, I outlined here in the table the 14th to the 20th, and we kept it slow, slightly below average. Again, this is not a, uh, a big – Arctic blast of air that's going to send temperatures in the highs in the 20s and, and all that nonsense. We're not talking about that. Slightly below average. Uh, average right now temperatures are – in the low 40s to upper 40s from north to south that's what normal is for highs okay so if you're slightly below average you could still be near 40 degrees and still be slightly below average it could be in the upper 30s still be slightly below average okay so it doesn't necessarily guarantee snow and also uh, we stopped it after this period here because there's some uncertainty uh, after that point here but we're going to get into that and why we think it's going to continue past this point. We didn't light it, uh, put it in the table yet for a reason because it can kind of go either way. We're waiting for some observations to come in. One of those observations we're looking at is the Madden Julian Oscillation. This is the latest and greatest from the Madden Julian Oscillation. Let me just explain what this is. This is an intraseasonal cycle that will affect our weather within a season. Okay, intraseasonal. Okay, uh, the uh, different phases of the Madden Julian oscillations indicate warm versus cold periods. And we, if the models are indicating that we're going to be in a phase four, uh, many of the models are, and I'll show you that here in a second too. Phase four would indicate that the best convection along the international, uh, excuse me, along the equator would be in the Indian Ocean. Well, here's a current snapshot, current snapshot of the Madden Julian oscillation. Here is your convection in, in the uh, Indian Ocean. The, manager, the models are not picking up on this convection here, which is the greatest convection near the dateline. This is El Nino force, uh, forcing. This is the best convection anywhere in the entire world. Okay, So uh, international date line is this north-south line here. The equator is the east-west line here. Here is North America. Here is Central America, South America. Okay, I'm outlining this here. Okay, North America, we live up here. All right. I know that's great. I'm terrible with these outlines, but the international date line is right here, and there's the equator. There's your best convection. You can clearly see that here. This is very weak convection out here in the phase four area. Furthermore, these brown lines here indicate that uh, the areas of convection will weaken out here, whereas the green lines are showing where the best forcing will be going forward. All right. We had uh, here just talking. Uh, if you follow us on Twitter, and, and uh, actually in the last video, we actually talked about the Southern Oscillation Index dropping very dramatically. That will also help aid in this uh, convection being in this area. All right. So there are a lot of things helping this area convection sustain itself. So the models are currently showing. Uh, some models are at least the Canadian and the uh, European model. Here's the European model showing us going from where we are right now, right here in the Circle Death. This is observed, that black dot right here, 
That is the observed value. We're in the circle death, which means the Madden Julian oscillation has no effect on our pattern. Okay. The uh, European models is suggesting that this will end up in phase four. Phase four is a warm phase. Okay. These are your cold phases here. Seven, eight, one. And uh, you can even make an argument for two. Not really cold here, but uh, your warm phase is over here on this side. Okay, three, four, five, six. So this would suggest that we'd be in a warm phase, and the eastern half of the United States would be in a warm phase. If you look at the high res G, uh, GFS here, here's the uh, GFS, and the ensembles are not running because we just had an upgrade with that. So this, forget about this green line here. That makes no sense. We're starting here again. Here's your starting point. The GFS has it st remaining the circle death and heading back toward phase one and phase two. This makes more sense right now to us and that's why we're following the uh, because if you're following the GFS because if you look at the Matt and Julian oscillation this is observed this is not made up this is not a model the best convection is right here near the international date line and these green the green lines these contours you see around here are indicating that the best forcing will stay in this area and decrease in this area so this is not a phase if it was phase four the best convection would be out here and it's not Okay, so going forward, we're not seeing this, what the European model is showing here, going into phase four, because it's showing that go right to, uh, abruptly into phase three and phase four. I don't see that. Now, we, could we be wrong? Could something else overwhelm the Mount and Julian oscillation? Absolutely. Do we think that's going to happen? Not likely. I think it's more uh, headed toward a uh, the date line, which is out here in uh, phase one, phase two-ish. Actually, you know, this whole colder regime anywhere over here. So I think the, the GFS has the better idea. Here's a look at what happens, the effects of those as we get into uh, phase. Uh, here's a phase four look. You see, this is all warmer here. The greens here, the colder is the blues. All right, so you have colder here in the southwest United States. Eastern United States would be warmer in a phase four. But look what happens in a phase one. Colder along the southeastern U.S. coastline. Uh, pretty much all the southeastern, southern and southeastern United States and up the eastern seaboard. The warm retreats to the west all right if we take a look at the gfs ensembles it's starting to indicate that's going to happen as we get toward the middle of the month this area here of the greatest warming is right now centered over eastern canada we're expecting it to retreat to the west which allow this cold to cut underneath of it here again this is not abrupt cold this is not deep arctic chill or anything like that this is still cold coming underneath the ridge so this is not going to be – the question is whether it's, is it sustained past that point. And I do think you're going to have some ups and downs here as you get in the second half of the month, but we're going to get some cold shots. That's the key. It's not sustained cold yet. I don't think you get into that till you're deep into January, and then you have uh, just uh, unbelievable cold here. Might might, might it be to the second week of uh, January or third – or second week of January or so that you get that sustained cold going right into the month of February and then even into March. But – the up and down is going to continue, but at least you have shots. Right now, where in the first two weeks of December, you're not getting shots of cold air, at least not cold relative to average. All right, it, people will argue, well, it's pretty cold outside. Well, I don't think it 50 is cold, not for this time of year, essentially. We look for the uh, sea surface temperatures here. Greatest warming again is in this region right here. We need no 3.4 is where we want it, and uh, by the greatest warming being, being here, your greatest convection is going to be in this area. The importance of the convection is it throws heights at the western ridge. Uh, so you get a positive, uh, positive PNA up here, and that will promote a trough in the east eventually. Eventually, this is not for the first two weeks of December. This is going to help uh, let the best forcing. If we're not in phase four, and the best forcing is out in this area, will help build the ridge up into the Gulf of Alaska, and then we'll have a and the western coast of the United States will have a trough in the east. That's what we're looking at right now. And a lot of this, what happened is, is we compare these to our other analogs here. This is 2002. You look at the sea surface temperatures in 2002, very similar to what we're at right now. Warm PDO as well, warm up here in this area, cold south of Greenland. This is exactly what we have right now. Okay. Here's all your warm right here, warm PDO, greatest warming elongated here along the equator. And moving away from Nia 1 2, people are arguing. I see people on Twitter. Uh, Again, I don't want to slam anybody here because I don't call anybody out, but uh, that are suggesting this area here is going to continue to warm again. Uh, there is no evidence to support that whatsoever. None whatsoever. So if you're hearing that, it's just, it's just hogwash. Just ignore it. Your greatest forcing is going to be out here. Your westerlies are pointing to that, and I can show you that here too. Here's your 850 millibar wind vectors where you're showing the greatest forcing. As This is actually a couple weeks ago. You can see it's actually increasing here. 
uh, in near the dateline as well. So your greatest warming is going to end up in this area because that's the way the wind anomalies are headed. Your easterlies over here, this is showing cooler closer to this coast of South America, which is which will lead to uh, Nino 1 and 2 dropping off and the eastern part of Nino 3 dropping off as well. Your greatest warming is west of 120, 120 degrees, degrees west. That is out in this area here, and that's going to make it a uh, more a west centralized El Nino, which certainly will help with uh, our prospects of going to a colder pattern. Now here is another thing I just tweeted out yesterday. This is the current look at uh, at the polar vortex sitting over top of the Arctic Circle. You can see it is entrenched. Here is here's the uh, North America. Here here's Alaska. Here's Siberia. Okay, here's Greenland. The PV is sitting intact right here and it's not budging. As long as that PV is staying up here and locked to the north. You're not going to get uh, you know, the Arctic Oscillation to turn negative and get the cold air to bleed into the United States. That's what's happening in the next two weeks because this polar, polar vortex has been stuck here and it isn't moving. There is signs, though, that uh, it will become displaced. And the G uh, GFS Ensemble and the Canadian Ensembles have hidden a, hit, uh, excuse me, hinted at that today with uh, this polar, the warming, now stratospheric warming happening uh, up over Alaska and Siberia. This area of stratospheric warming will help displace some of this cold air near the poles and let it bleed down into our area here if correct we're going to keep an eye on this here this is going max range here on the ensembles so that doesn't necessarily mean it's a guarantee but this will certainly help as well with getting some uh, more sustained cold air here into our region and uh, you know that of course when you have more cold air you have the opportunity for snowfall so there's no reason to abandon right now what we think is going to be a colder second half of the month of December. Again, you look at 1957, 1958, here's, here's, a, here's a look of, of what it was, plus three for the month. So this is not a surprise, guys. This is not something that uh, we're saying, oh, wow, it's a lot warmer than we thought. No, this is what we expected for this month. We expected it, and especially in the first half, and we're getting that right now. We're getting the warmer than average temperatures. We're not getting the snow. We're expecting to have at least some shot at it. In the second half of the month, and January, or excuse me, December 1957 did that. We actually ended up with one or two storms here in the latter part of the month of December that allowed you to uh, tap into a little bit of just enough cold air with one of those cold shots and uh, some precipitation uh, running into that to give you some snow events. Not a lot of snow. It was slightly above normal. It wasn't crazy, but it was still a start for uh, for winter so expect that in the second half of the month hey maybe you get lucky and you get something right around christmas i know some people are looking for a white christmas that's a possibility we'll take a look at that in more detail in the short range but uh, right now we're looking at uh, this pattern flipping and going to a colder regime by the time we get to january but i really think it's going to hold off and sustained until after into the second half of january uh, maybe as early as the second week depending on what the strat warming does and some other factors but uh Right now, the ensembles are starting to pick up on the fact that, hey, well, at least we're going to get back to near average or slightly below by the time we get into uh, the middle of the month here. And this is looking actually at the uh, 21st here, where it's still showing that here on the GFS. So we'll we'll just take a look at that and, uh, you know, continue to update with the, uh, the – every day we do this in the forum, but we do the weather weeklies, of course, and every Friday we have the free public long-range update just uh, for all the doubters here, I understand it's difficult because you're not seeing snow yet, and you're like, wow, I'm still outside in just a light jacket. Just wait. It's, it's, it's coming. It's just, it's, I just have to emphasize that everybody has to be patient. This is exactly what we expected. Everything's going according to plan. You can go into our uh, EPA WA forum, click on the image below this video. It will take you to the sign up for that. We get in these discussions for the long range, and we update the long range uh, every single day. Uh, Monday through Friday, so you don't have to wait for the weekly update or the Weather Weekly's video, which, of course, you can get quite lengthy. I'm here oh, just over 19 minutes now. So we're going to end this now, but uh, just continue to follow along that. If you want the updates in more real time with interaction with our meteorologist, you can do so at the EPAWA Premium Forum. I'm Eastern PA Weather Authority meteorologist Bobby Martrich, and that is this edition of Weather Weekly's for December 6, 2015. See you again next Sunday.